Hello, everyone. Welcome to the third Sunday of Advent. I'm Rick Price, the pastor of the Lunenburg Lutheran Parish on the south shore of Nova Scotia. Let us pray. Stir up the wills of your faithful people, Lord God, and open our ears to the words of the prophets, that anointed by your spirit, we may testify to your light. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. A reading from the first chapter of Luke. This is Mary's song of praise, commonly called the Magnificat. My soul magnifies the Lord. And my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the mighty one has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There's something about poetry, something deeper than simple words on a page, something more visceral than just speaking and hearing. Sure, it's communication, but it is so much more. Sometimes there's rhythm, the beating heart of regularity, of predictability, of constancy, giving us something to hold on to and expect like the rhythm of our daily morning routine, like a Sunday morning liturgy, like a workout regime, like a hard driving rock and roll song, like anything that makes use of pattern and tempo and structure. Sometimes there's rhyme. The cat in the hat sat on a mat and all that. Again, giving us structure, structure for the ears, but also leading somewhere, teasing us forward into a sense of anticipation. What's the poet going to do with that word? What word is going to be used next? How is she ever going to find a rhyme that won't be a linguistic crime and won't disrupt our language paradigm when we really don't have the time? But there is more to poetry than rules of performance, than laws of composition and versification, than meter and measure, than rhyming and timing, than pulse and throb. Yes, sometimes there's rhythm, sometimes there's rhyme, but there is also the free verse of spoken word artists and the random collection of doodlers and the illicit creativity of graffiti spray painters and the righteous rage of the prophets and the oppressed and even the just plain angry. There is something about poetry that encompasses all of these, which addresses more than just the brain, which makes it more than just a mental exercise. Poetry done well engages the soul, speaks the heart, touches the divine, in speaker and listener. Poetry is dialogue, is connection, is the bonding of person with person, of heart with heart, of soul with soul, of creature with creator, of creation with God. Mary was a poet. 
And so to borrow something from Hollywood, there's something about Mary. Mary in her poetry, in her heart song, in her soul expression, invites us, teases us, compels us, forces us to go deeper. Mary insists that we connect with her heart, with her soul, with her God, with our heart, our soul, our God. By insisting that we dialogue with our own selves. By insisting that we bond with the people around us, the situations around us, the challenges and the pain and the suffering around us. And in so doing, she insists that we discover the presence of God. My soul magnifies the Lord. And my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. No bully pulpit for Mary. No speaker's corner, no PA system or stage or crowded hall, not even a cell phone or a Twitter account. Just the simple outpouring of a soul a soul touched by the divine, a soul steeped in relationship, a soul nourished by the teachings of her people, a soul sustained by the prophets, a soul, an authentic, genuine soul. A soul overshadowed by spirit, overcome by grace, overwhelmed with promise to the point where it had to pour itself out in poetry for herself and her cousin and no one else. There's something about Mary singing her heart song for herself and her cousin alone in an unnamed village in the hill country far away from pretty much everybody. No one else to hear, no one else to listen, no one else to stir or motivate or inspire, except perhaps God and the angels and all of heaven and earth. Mary's poetry, because it is honest, because it is authentic heart song, because it is genuinely from her soul, reaches through time and space and circumstance and encounters us here and connects us with God, the God who comes, the God of Advent. There's something about Advent this season of preparation, of anticipation, of coming. There's something poetic about it, with its pattern and structure, its rhythm and rhyme, its candles and stories, its awareness of time. This season does what poetry does. It invites us in, teases us forward, compels us and forces us and insists that we go deeper, deeper than tinsel and bows and decoration, deeper than shopping till dropping, deeper so that we can come to the place where authentic, genuine heart and soul connection can happen. So we can truly dialogue with ourselves. So we can truly bond with the people around us, the situations around us, the challenges and the pain and the suffering around us. The poetry of Advent invites us, teases us, pushes us to encounter God, the God of Advent, the God who comes the God who comes and changes things, the God who comes and changes us, who comes and changes us into people who take part 
in God's great reversal. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. The poetry of Mary, the poetry of Advent, is not necessarily comfortable verse composed of regular and predictable meter and measure, rhyming and timing, pulse and throb. Yes, it has its own rhythm, its own beat, but it is the heartbeat of life, which sometimes races, which is sometimes uneven, which is frequently raw, and is always, always real. And the poetry of Mary, the poetry of Advent, sometimes rhymes, but more often than not, it's more like the free verse of spoken word artists and the random collections of doodlers and the illicit creativity of graffiti spray artists than the righteous rage of the prophets and the oppressed and even the just plain angry. There's something about poetry. There's something about Mary. There's something about Advent which engages our hearts, which engages our souls, which engages our lives. There's something about poetry, about Mary, about Advent, about God, that encompasses all of these and which leaves us different and befuddled and blessed. Surely, from now on, all generations will call us blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for us, and holy is God's name. Amen. Trusting the dawning of God's day, we pray for the world God loves, the church God calls, and all people according to their needs. God of poetry, of Mary, of Advent, you come to us in rhythm, you speak to us in rhyme, you accompany us in life when there is no rhythm, when we hear no rhyme. God who comes, hold us in your promise. God of poetry, of Mary, of Advent, your coming changes things and changes us. Strengthen our faith to participate in your great reversal. God who comes, hold us in your promise. God of poetry, of Mary, of Advent, open us to the new, the difficult, the challenging. Help us listen to spoken word artists, to read graffiti, to pay attention to prophets. God who comes, hold us in your promise. God of poetry, of Mary, of Advent, guide your church in its current struggles. Enable us to sing with Mary and point our community and world to your constant coming. God who comes, hold us in your promise. God of poetry, of Mary, of Advent, you come in the raw, the painful, the difficult, Use your people to touch the isolated, the discouraged, the hopeless, and the ill with healing love. We especially pray for those we name before you. God who comes, hold us in your promise. God of poetry, of Mary, of Advent. In the rhythm and the rhyme, in the fog and throughout time, 
you are God. Remind us again that you do walk with us. God who comes, hold us in your promise. We ask all this in the name of Jesus, our approaching Lord. Amen. And now, may God, for whom nothing is impossible, restore and bless you. May Christ, in whom is the dawning of grace, carry you and lead you. May the spirit whose poetry is gladness fill you with energetic peace and determined hope. Amen. Go in peace. Prepare the way of the Lord. Thanks be to God.